What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Dart Zone Tomcat. This blaster by Dart Zone is a high performance, high velocity, short length dart blaster with a 50 round capacity. Pump action, slam fire enabled, super fun blaster. Let's get into it. Included is the blaster, stock, drum, sights, muzzle device, safety glasses, short darts, and instructions. External overview of the Tomcat starting up at the front. There's no in-strike barrel lug, but it does have a removable muzzle device that fits in there with friction. It looks cool. It fits the front of the shell really, really well, but it does not affect performance. It never hurts to have more blaze orange at the front of your toy blaster so everyone around you knows it's a toy. Below the muzzle device is the priming handle to prime this one. You pull back and manually push forward. The prime strength required is way harder than a normal Nerf Elite blaster, but this shoots much, much harder than those. So with that much stronger spring and much higher muzzle velocity, that extra priming weight is to be expected. That being said, it's a pretty smooth prime. It's smooth, but it's a strong spring. It takes some muscle to prime this one. Shooting off just a few rounds isn't a big deal. Anyone can do it, but slam firing the entire 50 round cylinder really becomes a forearm workout. After my testing procedure, I had a gnarly forearm pump going. The pump, your muscles get a really tight feeling, like your skin is going to explode any minute. Moving on up top, we have a dart zone style tack rail running all the way across the blaster right here, attached to which I have the two removable sights that are included. These can move along the rail wherever you want them, or you can remove them if you want. So this is just a standard front peg iron sight, but then this rear sight is kind of like a red dot, but looking through it is very strange. It takes a second to really get used to it. So pretty cool looking iron sights that are pretty functional. And again, if you don't like it, just take them off. Moving down to the loading system, which is very cool. This is a 50 round capacity blaster. 50, five zero half length darts. That's insanely high capacity. And the design is very interesting. It's very compact and space efficient. I find this blaster easiest to load to remove the drum completely from the blaster. To do that, you pull back on the priming handle and then pull out. And this loading system is designed to be removed like that. So if you want to get a few of these, you can tactically reload them just like a spring powered magazine. But loading this drum device is very unusual. It's not a front loader. These are not barrels. This just holds the dart ready to be chambered in the blaster. So this loading device has 25 holes or ports and each port holds two darts for a total capacity of 50 darts. The instructions have an illustration on how to load the darts. You can put in the tail end and then shove the tip in like that. I personally found it easiest to load in the first round of darts just by shoving them back through the holes like this. It's faster and it doesn't damage the darts. And that's just for the first first round, but again, each slot holds two darts. But then getting to the second round is where I had some issues. You have to shove in the tail of the dart like this and really crimp the dart to get it in there. I wore out a bunch of my darts by loading it this way, and this is how the instructions say to do it. And because this blaster uses a compression barrel, it's a high performance blaster, you don't want damaged darts. They tend to be less accurate. And the back of the ports have this little clip right here, so it holds the darts in. So if this is fully loaded and you shake it around, you're not gonna lose any darts, which means you can pick up extras, put them in pouches, and have hundreds of rounds ready to go. What a cool innovation super high capacity and very compact. Again, capacity of 50 darts. This is so small compared to the 50 round Titan drum. Granted, the Titan uses full length darts, not half length darts. But this mechanism is so cool how you can shove two darts into each port. Super high capacity, yet still very dense. If you buy one of these, be very careful during your reload. If your priming handle moves forward, this little peg sticks out. So if you try to shove your drum in there, you could damage your blaster. Be very aware of your priming handle's location. To avoid problems, I found it easiest to prime and then hold the blaster straight up so gravity keeps the priming handle down. I ran into an issue when I was reloading and I dropped the blaster down, the priming handle slid a little bit and I couldn't get it in there. So just be aware of that so you don't break your blaster. But removing and reinserting the drum is super fast and very easy. Moving on, right here we have a trigger safety. This is the pop through design that Dart Zone's used before. Protruding from this side is safe, pushing it through makes it hot so you can pull the trigger. Now down to the trigger, the trigger break is pretty standard and this blaster does have slam fire. However, the slam fire hiccup just a couple times per cylinder. But sometimes I would short stroke it, which causes a double feed in this blaster. The blaster is strong enough just to double fire and it shoots out two at once. It doesn't squib or malfunction. And it is human error, not mechanical failure, but it's worth noting. Just make sure you prime all the way back and push all the way forward every prime. It gets difficult on the muscles by the end of the drum though, because it has such a high capacity. You don't normally sit there and shoot a high performance blaster 50 times in a row so fast. That's the trigger, now down to the grip. Overall, this is a super comfortable grip that's very well designed. It reminds me a lot of the Nexus Pro grip because it's comfortable, it's gonna be welcoming to most hand types, but it's nothing special or crazy, which is what Dart Zone does with these pro level blasters 
fingers because that's what we want. When your hands are on this for two hours, it never gets uncomfortable or tiring. And it does have a finger guard down here, but the grip is so long that it's not that big a deal. Even if you have super thick fingers and you're wearing winter gloves or something, you could totally fit your hand in there, no problem. Overall, really good grip. If you like the Nexus Pro grip, I think you'll like this grip too. Moving back to the stock, this is an in-strike stock attachment point. Thank you, Dart Zone. So if you want to throw on your favorite Nerf stock, you totally can. It fits on there tightly. It works just like a normal Nerf stock attachment point. You can throw on your Nerf stocks, but you probably won't want to because this stock is really cool. So you push down on the orange slide right here. It's also present on the left-hand side to remove the stock. Then there's another button right here. It's also present on the left-hand side, which you push in to adjust the length of the stock. And it's a pretty stable stock. Even with the high power spring in this blaster, I didn't have it collapse at all like the old Raider stock used to. And this little cheek piece is attached to another Dart Zone tack rail right here. So you can adjust it forward and back depending on how far out your stock is adjusted so you can put your face right where you want it. And this is a cheek riser. And if it's too high, you can also remove it. And it's still pretty comfortable to shoot. Super adjustable, super tactical. This is a really good stock. Customizing your blasters to fit your body type is a big deal for prolonged play experience. It just makes it way more comfortable. And especially when you're rocking this super heavy prime trying to slam fire off 50 rounds, having a nice stock custom fit for your length is really important. This is a great stock. You can adjust it to your body. I'd recommend you just play with all the settings right when you buy it and set it to your body type. So overall, really great stock, highly customizable. But again, if you want to remove it and put something else on, you totally can. Thank you, Dart Zone, for innovating the stock. Nerf hasn't made anything new in years. I hope they come out with more cool, adjustable, tactical stocks like this in the future too. Nerf apparently gave up on modulus, so maybe Dart Zone will step in and give us more tactics. So that is an external overview of the Tomcat. Now I'll show you the blaster firing. Shooting the included Dart Zone Ruby Darts. some slam fire by holding down the trigger. Operating this blaster was super fun. It performs very well. It shoots hard, it's pretty accurate, and the ergonomics are solid. I did not experience any major jams and malfunctions, but as I mentioned, sometimes I did short stroke the priming system when I was slam firing, which means I chambered around and then I had to reprime, so I double fed and then I shot off two instead of one. The blaster's strong enough to just shoot two at once, so it wasn't a big deal. I didn't have any squibs or darts trapped in the barrel, and no other major jams or malfunctions with this blaster. I don't want you to look at that firing demo and think this blaster is somehow harder to prime than other spring blasters up at this performance range. But by the end of the cylinder, my arms are legitimately fatigued and that's why it looks harder to prime, because it is. It's not mechanical failure, it's a smooth prime, it's just a strong spring, and shooting 50 darts in a row is a proper forearm burn, like my muscles are still sore right now. This compares to shooting with like 12 round magazines. Just that moment you take to jump the mag, reload and keep firing is just enough for the muscle to rest. Without that short little break every mag, it's exhausting to shoot off 50 rounds in a row. But having too much ammo loaded and ready to go is really not a problem. Problem. So I'm not complaining, I'm just explaining. And the ergonomics of this blaster are also designed very well, so the play experience was really positive. To compare this blaster to others, I put it up on my chronograph. And with the included Dart Zone Ruby Darts, achieved an average velocity of 149 feet per second, which is obviously way harder than the Nerf Elite Par of about 70 feet per second. This is a Dart Zone Pro level blaster shooting up at the same muzzle velocity as the Nexus Pro and Max Striker. So excellent performance from the Tomcat. That is the objective information I can provide on this blaster, now to my personal opinion. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the Tomcat. This blaster shoots hard, the ergonomics are solid, and it has a 50 round capacity, which is outrageous. And the fact that you can pop this drum out and throw in a fully loaded one to reload another 50 rounds quickly is so awesome. What a great addition to the high performance pro level blasters. So very high opinion of the Tomcat. High capacity, high velocity, accurate, good ergo. What else do you want? And I like how they lean towards like more of a timeless ergonomic design. So in like a couple years, this is still going to be a comfortable, fun, practical blaster to use. The cosmetics aren't super edgy, but they're super neutral 
feel unoffensive and you won't get sick of it after months and months of use. I think that's what they're going for. Blasters that are gonna stay around and stay relevant for a long period of time. So overall, pretty high opinion. I do have one complaint about the loading of the drum. As I mentioned, the first row, you can just shove the darts right through this back hole. But then the second one, you have to bend the dart and crimp it to get it in there. I damaged a bunch of my darts and when you do that repeatedly, it's gonna wear out the foam. Worn out foam in a compression barrel at this muzzle velocity is gonna lead to inconsistent trajectories. But that may be a small price to pay for a 50 round capacity on a 150 FPS blaster. So overall opinion of the Tomcat remains very high. Now to the question to buy or not to buy. Obviously, if you're a stock class nerfer shooting elite darts, don't buy this. This is not built for you. This blaster is a high performance, high velocity blaster that will hurt younger people. 150 FPS will leave little marks on you if you shoot at point blank range. It hurts. This is designed for more performance oriented, higher level nerfer shooting at that 100 FPS mark. And if that's you and you're looking for a spring primary, yes, definitely consider the Tomcat. Incredibly high capacity with removable drums so you can have a bunch of the drums were preloaded. So this would make for an excellent primary for an outdoor nerf war playing with other high performance nerfers. Of course, it does only shoot half length darts. It is not compatible with full length darts. So if you're a full length dart user, obviously this blaster is not right for you. But if you're up at the high performance range, short darts are where it's at. They just perform better and you have such a high capacity and such a small profile. So a very positive purchase recommendation if you're looking for something in this class. I typically like spring powered magazines, but a spring powered magazine with a 50 round capacity would be so much bigger than this. So I'm digging this. If I could pick up a few extra drums, I would totally run this as my primary in an outdoor battle. So yeah, definitely a positive buy recommendation if you're looking for a high performance spring primary like this. But hopefully I've laid out all the information you need to make an educated purchase decision on your own. If you'd like to buy a Tomcat, I'll put a purchase link in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching bros. And as always, stay tactical.